everyone. Am I on? Can you hear me fine? Excellent. So uh, before I start my talk, I wanted us to, um, <clears throat> to have a little bit of a vitamin G for breakfast. Do you guys know what vitamin G is? It's, it's probably one of the most important nourish, nourishing things we can um, consume on a daily basis. It's something that um, uh, nourishes our soul, nourishes our whole being. Can anybody guess what vitamin G might be? Gratitude. Gratitude. That's right. So I just want to take a moment to invite you to join me in a moment of gratitude. Just to get here, just to get present. Okay. So I invite you to close your eyes and maybe even put your hand on your heart. And take a breath. And just connect to the feeling of gratitude. Gratitude for the opportunity to come together as a community for the purpose of connection and growth. Gratitude for the amazing team of people that have orchestrated this experience for us this morning. Gratitude for the museum who gave us the space to meet and the coffee, and the baked goods. And let's expand that gratitude outside of this place. Gratitude for this beautiful city that we live in, for the mountains that surround us, for the amazing sky. Just imagine that gratitude beaming out of your heart in all the colors of And imagine walking out into the world with that shining light touching everyone you come in contact with. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Beautiful. Now we're here. Yeah. Yeah. So before I do my talk, I want to tell you about the journey that I've taken to get to this moment right here. <clears throat> a few months ago, when um, I agreed to do this talk, I was very excited. And um, uh, truth to be told, I haven't done a public talk in probably about 10 years. <clears throat> Up until that point, um, Public speaking was something I did professionally for many, many years, decades. And the last time I talked in front of a crowd, it was about a thousand people. And something interesting happened when I said yes. That experience, that excitement of about to do something that I love to do triggered something in me, triggered this character that I've had under, under control and tamed for quite a while. It's character. I call him Schutzter. <laughs> it's my inner critic. I call him Schutzter because when he shows up, he likes to shoot all over myself. <laughs> you should do this and you should do that. You know. And with him, he brought this committee to support him. My inner procrastinator, <laughs> my inner perfectionist. <laughs> Sounds familiar? Yeah. 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 My inner judger. Yeah. And so at first, inner procrastinator got into action. Oh, you can wait on this talk. You have time. You've done this before. You've done this in your sleep. Go about your life. Clock's ticking. The date's not moving. The closer we got to the talk, all of a sudden, I'm like, okay, let's get into action. Let's, let's decide what it is that I'm going to talk to this group about today. <clears throat> and a perfectionist showed up and said, hello. This talk has to be perfect. Every slide has to be amazing. You should show them your design skills. You should show them your, your artistic skills. You should tell them the story of your life. 
Ooh, that inner perfectionist. So I sat down and started working. Inner critic said, you should really be clear about what you say. So sit down and script this entire talk. Be clear about what you say. And I sat there and wrote and scripted and wrote. And all these ideas came. And with them, all the stress and anxiety. Of, How am I going to remember all this? I don't want to sit in front of a computer. I want to connect. But the inner critic was like, no, 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 you're doing good. Keep going. This is exactly what needs to be done. And he got to the point where three drafts later, <laughs> about, I would say, a few days ago, <laughs> my body started speaking to me. My back started seizing up. Heartburn started coming up. Pressure in my chest. And I thought, ooh, something's off here. My body's telling me something. What is it telling me? It's telling me to trust. It's telling me, you don't need all that. Just show up and trust that whatever needs to come through will come through. Trey called me up. When am I going to get your slide deck? I said, Trey, there's going to be just one slide. I threw away all the scripts. I threw away all the notes. And I reconnected to something that I kind of lost touch with in that process. Because that inner critic part of me was being fed by fear and by scarcity, and by the belief that I'm not enough. It's funny how that happens, how we can just get triggered like that with all the inner work that I've done for so long, it's still there, you know? So I caught myself, and I stopped. And the first thing I said, okay, let's reconnect to love. First of all, let me love my inner child just for a minute. Ooh, just tell him, ooh, bless you. You're good. You're okay. You're worthy. You matter. You're good. And then reconnect to my inner muse and to my soul artist, the one that I can count on, that I've met many times before, that I know that when I give him space to play, he comes up with amazing things. <clears throat> so I trusted. And I trusted that I'll come here today and show you what trust looks like without having any idea of what I'm going to talk about. But as I've been talking to you now, ideas have been flying in. Marion Muse is playing. She's dancing right over there. My soul artist is right there, sitting behind me going, yes, go. Let's, let's do this. Let's tell them something. Let's share, share something that will hopefully help them connect to love. Not only connect to love, be love. Be love in the world. So... <clears throat> Fear has been a companion of mine for many years. And I'm sure that is not something that is unfamiliar to everybody in this room, especially us creatives. Up until the age of 40, I was a creative professional. I was a designer. I had a design agency in Los Angeles. And for close to two decades, <clears throat> I've enjoyed success, as success would be defined by the industry. But I was also operating from a, from a place of scarcity and fear and people-pleasing, like most of the industry is operating from. And I got to a point, after about 20 years of working as, a, as an artist, where my well went dry. I experienced a serious creative burnout, the kind of burnout that, you know, the things I used to love to do, they're just not feeding me anymore. 
and it sent me into this depression. And in that space, you know, sometimes they say that you kind of have to meet, hit rock bottom before you can begin to recover and heal. That was my spiritual rock bottom. It was a spiritual crisis for me. And I began to seek help. And in that process, I met three people that changed the course of my life. A spiritual mentor, a psychiatrist, and a coach. And I began to work with them, apprentice with them. I wanted their influence in my life. Spiritual mentor, one of the first things he said to me was that you will actualize yourself, learn to love yourself, and create from free spirit. My psychiatrist said, you will thrive when you begin to operate from your intuition, when you trust your intuition. And we begin to create and express yourself from that place of intuition. And my coach taught me that love is service. And serving people in the world is how I stay and connected to that place of love. So that was really inspiring to me, working with these three guides in my life. And that attraction to the work made me realize that, oh, this is what I want to do as well. I want to help, help people shift from a place of fear to a place of love. So I put on a new hat of, hey, I'm a business coach now. And I began to coach designers and agency owners. <clears throat> and what I've noticed very quickly that they were all operating from fear and scarcity and running their businesses from that place. <coughs> and that all their business troubles, all their business problems were actually spiritual problems in disguise. <laughs> and then when we decided to begin to do some work on the spiritual side and teach them what does it mean to actually be love, to really embody that idea and work through the world, not just in your business with your clients, but with every person that you come in contact with. And, and how you love yourself. So if you go, if you take away one thing from this talk today, the idea that I would love for you to, to walk home with is that the more you love yourself, the more you trust yourself. The more you love yourself, the more you trust yourself. Right. But love, love takes work. Because our default is fear and scarcity. That's how we're wired. That's how we're created. You know, Mother Nature created us as these beings with this fight or flight default that we fall into. And unless we actually activate our frontal cortex of our brain and actually put energy into activating love in our life, we will stay in that fear and scarcity. And oftentimes won't even know that we're there because that's all we know. So love takes work. And over the course of the last 15 years of working with people and working on myself, learning to love myself, I've learned that love, when I'm in that space of love, the outcome of that is abundance in my life. Because abundance responds to love. Scarcity responds to fear. So I began to work with people and um, teach them how to love themselves, teach them how to create from free spirit. And we're talking about people who are like in the corporate world, agency owners, you know, dealing with huge branding campaigns, but put them in front of a plank canvas and they're terrified and they don't know what to do. You know? So over the years, I began patterns 
I began to notice that, oh, there are three areas that we need to keep active in our life in a way of a ritual that help us stay in that space of love. Again, love takes work. But I also learned that the more that we began to engage in these practices, everything else in life and in business starts shifting. Yeah. Because it's where we're coming from. So it doesn't matter so much where we're going, it really matters more where we're coming from. And if we can stay connected and work on staying in that space of love, trust is the outcome. We can trust ourselves because we love ourselves. So I want to share with you those three pillars, those three areas that have now become my life's work. It's something that I teach everyone that I work with. Every journey I take my clients on includes aspect of these practices. And I really invite you to dig deeper in each one of these pillars and see what works for you. I'll give you an example of what I do to stay connected to love. The practices that keep me in a space of abundance. Right? So, the three pillars, what are they? <clears throat> well, the first one is creative expression. Self-expression. Expressing from here, not from here. Coming from a design background, I got really good at solving problems creatively. You guys can all relate to that, I'm sure. Right? We channel our artistry. Our soul artist is kind of like a little bit on hold, but he, he infuses our creativity and our artistry for the sake of other people. As artists, we must keep that soul artist alive. So how can you create something that expresses your emotional self on a regular basis, as a ritual, as a practice, right? <clears throat> so what I do is, um, well, being an artist, we go through seasons. Seasons of practices and things that we want to express ourselves. I went through a season of chalk pastel drawings, and I went through a season, a season of acrylic paintings, and I went through a season of <clears throat> um, um, collaging. Currently, I'm in the season of what I call my meditative season. I'll sit down with a pen and my journal book and connect to how I feel in the moment and just draw shapes. And with my pen, I will just take time to just color it in. That's one meditative up there. I do one almost every day. That, when I'm finished with that, and it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes, it's something that just helps me take something out, express something. Right? So what is it that you can do? You can express yourself for 20 minutes. Is it a poem? Is it a drawing? Is it a doodle? but make something. You know, we've become a culture of scrollers, of sitting in front of screens. It's a beautiful thing, and it moves life forward. But in a way, it kind of crushes our soul artist. So meet yourself on a regular basis and express, express your emotions through art and share it with the world. Now, that self-expression is part of what encourages self-love to get stronger because <clears throat> self-love is the medicine to combat the, self, the inner critic, the self-critic. If you are in a place of high self-criticism -critic in your life, if that's something that you experience, rather than giving attention to the inner critic, because what you put attention to expands, put attention on 
loving yourself. And the more you love yourself, you'll see this thing happen where your inner critic will start to be quiet. Sometimes you'll have inner critic's attacks, like I did preparing for this talk. But out of each one of these attacks, each one of these experiences, I grow. I learn something. I understand something about myself. So creative expression, self-expression, emotional self-expression, pillar number one. Pillar number two is a self-love practice. And one of the things that I do, and it's something that I teach all my students, and something that I've discovered about oh, 10, 15 years ago, is one of the most powerful practices, better than therapy, <laughs> is to sit down with my journal book and pick up two color pens and script out a dialogue between myself and my higher self to begin a conversation with my higher self. Because guess what? We're in conversation with our inner critic all the time, whether we know it or not. But the minute that we can sit down and start a dialogue with that higher part of ourselves, with love, ooh, something amazing happens. We heal. So whenever I go through stress, whenever I'm faced with a challenge, whenever, whenever I feel that I have misaligned for myself, I've drifted away for myself, I sit down and I take my pen and I go, hello, higher self, and then pick up the other color and channel that voice. If you've never done it before, it will feel really weird in the beginning. Like, who is this? Why? You know, but trust me, stay with it. Because writing, right? Writing is a channeling. We're expressing something from here, through our hand, through our heart, out on the page. Hello, higher self. Yo says, welcome back. How are you this morning? And I'll say, I am going through this, so I'm going through that, and I'm just not sure, and I'll just bleh, vomit on the page. <laughs> and he always has the right thing to say. Sometimes is, tell me more. Or sometimes is a question. And sometimes it's an insight. But it's a dialogue. And in that dialogue, Something magical happens. Oftentimes, I, I, f I forget that it's all coming out of me, but when higher self is writing, like by the end of that session, I, I look at the, what, what came out and I think, wow, where did that come from? Come here. I just allowed access to that. So that's just one example, one tool of a self-love practice. I can promise you that if you Google self-love practices, you will have an abundance of ideas. The third pillar, the third pillar is gratitude, where we started this morning. Now the gratitude that we, start, that we experienced this morning was a gratitude going out into the world, being grateful for what is. The gratitude that I'm talking about is turning that gratitude around to myself. It's to actually experience self-acknowledgement. When was the last time you got acknowledged? And what did it feel like when you did it get acknowledged? It feels good, right? Well, why can't we acknowledge ourselves? So there's a practice that I that I engage in, and this is something I do weekly. I do this every Friday night when I close my week. I sit down with myself, open my journey book. I call it journey book, not journal book, because <laughs> it is a journey. <clears throat> and I practice a tool that I call my yay me list. <laughs> that yay me list is an opportunity for me to acknowledge just this last week, what, what great things did I do this week? And it could be something like, what, tonight? Tonight I'm going to sit down and write, yay me, 
It's always yay me, exclamation point, because <laughs> I'm going to be my own cheerleader for those moments that I'm sitting down and writing. So yay me, yay me for doing a creative morning's talk. Yay me for nourishing my body this week. Yay me for meditating every day. Yay me for meeting that friend I missed for so long. Yay me for making that phone call. Yay me for whatever comes. And you'll, you'll be amazed when you begin to kind of audit your week, like how many great things you've actually did that weren't even acknowledged. If you want to see a really beautiful <clears throat> history of your life, your life story, start a yay me journal book and go back and begin to read those yay me's. It will give you a very different perspective of your life. Yeah. So, three pillars. Emotional self-expression through art. A self-love, active self-love practice. And gratitude. Right? Because when we're not in those spaces, inner critic comes in. Inner critic comes in. And instead of being grateful, we walk through the world expecting things to happen. Yeah. So, we started with some vitamin G. And I want to invite you to go back to that space once again. And end our, our time together today with reconnecting to love so that you can leave this room today and continue to be love. So I invite you to close your eyes once again. Put your hand on your chest. And this time put both hands. And with the hand that is, that is on top, like press that against you. And imagine just receiving this, this hug from yourself. And connect to that space of gratitude for who you are. For what you've managed to accomplish until today. For how you are. For all the things that you've overcome. For how beautiful you are. For the love that lives inside of you. <sighs> that in. Nourish yourself. We need more lovers in the world. Love is going to heal us all. And when we love ourselves, we trust ourselves. When we trust ourselves, amazing things can be accomplished. Amazing things can happen. So take that feeling Take that space of love and go back into your life and be, be love. Thank you. <laughs>